This is going to be the ultimate Mac Studio real-world photography test. So let's go. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. If you're a pro photographer and you're still on the fence about which Mac Studio is best suited for your workflow, these benchmarks are going to help answer that question. I'll also be comparing a Mac Studio M1 Ultra against a 28 core Mac Pro. And no, this is not my Mac Pro. However, VisPen Photography in Melbourne, Australia was kind enough to run these tests for me and share with me the result. Thank you so much for that. I greatly appreciate it. For this, we'll be looking at four Mac Studios across all the different SOC or system on the ship that is available in these configuration. Two of them are going to be Max. The other two, it's going to be the Ultra. The way how these are going to scale is that the Max would have 10 CPU, Ultra has 20. And the way how we're looking at the GPU is that it's going to scale from 24, 32, 48, and 64. As far as memory and SSD go, I am using Apple standard base configuration for these machines. It tends to work really well for testing and we're just going to go with those. For the other test system, I'll also be adding result from the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro that I have tested. So you're going to see the result for that. And in addition, you're going to see a result for two Mac Pros, one 19 inch MacBook Pro that is the one with the Intel and also two M1 machines. So you're going to get a really comprehensive look about the way how these machines perform on the tasks that you may use them on a daily basis. So these are the price for the test system as configured. So I wanted to show you and give you some perspective as far as pricing go. But if we try to match everything up, you can see right now that the Mac Studio, depending on the configuration, could cost anywhere between a third or a fifth of a Mac Pro. And you're going to be really impressed by the performance when you really consider the price point. Now let's talk about my impression of the Mac Studio. Now that I have one that I'm deploying that is the base M1 Ultra to use in my daily workflow, I really enjoy using it. Despite the fact that there are reviewers out there that says that Apple may have throttled this or throttled that, I don't care. For my workflow being a pro photographer and also doing these videos, it is really a dream to work with. It's super smooth, super fast. Lightroom Classic just runs extremely fast in a way how I have not experienced that with any other machines before. Scrolling through thousands of files is really quick. There's no lag and this is running at the highest scaling resolution on a 4K display. In fact, I'm running on dual 4K display and Lightroom is able to catch up with it just fine. The previews, for instance, if we didn't render run to run and or if you just make an adjustment to thousands of files, the moment you land on those grid, the preview just comes in extremely fast. And I haven't seen another Mac generate the preview for Lightroom that fast before. I mean, this is extremely impressive. With that said, let's just jump right in and look at the result for Lightroom Classic when we're comparing all these machines. Starting out with just the Mac Studio. If we're taking a look at all these four configurations, you can see that the M1 Ultra is definitely performing really well, especially comparing with the M1 Max. I mean, we're talking about more than double the speed. It's like around 2.2 times speed compared to the M1 Max. So if you're constantly going through raw files in Lightroom, you're doing a lot of these, you want to generate the preview fast, I definitely recommend that you consider the M1 Ultra because it's going to shave you so much off your time. Granted, yes, the M1 Ultra does cost more, but overall, if you're saving this much amount of time in every single workflow that you throw at it, it's definitely a worthwhile investment. When we add these results from the Mac Studio to the rest of the lineup, the M1 Ultra stands out at the very top as you're seeing right now. However, the M1 Max, as much as we may say it is disappointing, whatever that may be, it is performing pretty much in range with all the other M1s with the 10 core CPU, although it is a little bit slower and being that it is in a desktop form factor with power feeding through it and a better cooling system, we would expect the performance to be slightly better, but we're not really getting that. So this has been the result across both the 24 and 32 GPU version that the one that I have tested. So obviously it's not quite as impressive as I want it to be, as I have already mentioned. When we add in the result for the Mac Pro, you can see that pretty much on the one-to-one -one preview in Lightroom, for instance, the M1 Ultra is definitely beating out the Mac Pro by quite a bit. And mind you, that base M1 Ultra is a third of a price for my Mac Pro. So I'm extremely impressed by the performance of that machine. And like I said, it's very fluid just using it on a daily basis for editing. So with this, I want to quickly show you the one-to-one -one preview. And this is just showing you the chart. For instance, the Ultra comparing to the Mac Pro, comparing it to, for example, the 16-inch with the M1 Max 10 CPU, 32 GPU. 
This is the base 14 inch Pro. You can see that the time does increase a little bit, not that bad at all. And if we add in the Mac Mini, that comes in right in the end. So obviously we have come a very long way. And like I said, I really enjoy the M1 Ultra a lot. Let's take a look at the Export 1000 Nikon DA50 file. This is a lossless compressed Nikon DA50, the same file that I have been using for all of my tests. We can see right now that the Ultra is performing extremely well, pretty much half the time that it takes, for example, the M1 Max to export as you're seeing right now. So that's why I said, if you're going to thousands of raw files at any given time, I would say Ultra is definitely the machine that you want to consider for your workflow because it does make that big of a difference. Now, as far as the way how the Ultra and the Max is performing, because it is pretty much the same CPU core on the Ultra between the two GPU versions, and similarly on the Max, you can see the performance variation is really not that much at all. So if you're just doing photography tasks in Lightroom most of the time, my recommendation is to get the minimum amount of GPU possible because you're really not going to use it that much at all. So let's have a look at the result of this and comparing with the rest of the M1 lineup, we can see that the Ultra sits at the very top, obviously. And again, the M1 Max, Max Studio sits at the very bottom of the list. However, if you really extrapolate the data and comparing it with the rest of the lineup, it's pretty much performing within range of all these other machines. It's not anything worse, I would say. I mean, it may take 30 seconds, maybe a minute longer on certain tasks, but I mean, it's not really out of range where it's that much slower. This is pretty much telling us the machine is performing as expected. And like I said before, even though we may expect it to perform, perform better in a desktop version, we're not really getting that at the moment. Here it is comparing with all the lineup. And with this one, I've also added in the 2019 28 core Mac Pro. And amazingly enough, the Mac Pro is beating up the M1 Ultra by pretty much around like nine seconds or so. Granted, this M1 Ultra version is the one that costs a fourth of the Mac Pro price. So obviously it's really giving the Mac Pro a run for the money. And you can see right there that it's obviously beating the 12 core Mac Pro very easily. The rest of the lineup you can see there between the M1 Mac Mini, the M1 Air, and also the 2019 MacBook Pro, which takes that much longer. So either way, depending on the machine that you're coming from, especially from an Intel, you're going to see a huge performance boost picking any of these machines. But I think that if you want the top performance, Ultra is definitely going to be the way to go. And here it is again, comparing, for example, the 28 core Mac Pro against the M1 Ultra. You can see that it's nine seconds faster. Uh, moving over to the 12 core Mac Pro, you can see that it is a little bit longer. And granted, this M1 Ultra is around, I would probably say like half the price of this Mac Pro, but here's the thing. The M1 Ultra with 48 core GPU, that is a fourth the price of this Mac Pro that I'm showing right now, is performing pretty much within range of that machine. So that just gives you a lot of things to really think about when it comes to performance and power for these machines. Now let's have a look at Lightroom Classic HDR Merge. And one thing I will share with you right now is that the result from these chart that I've shared with you in the previous video, for some reason, the result got mixed up and I was doing an audit of all the charts. Pretty much the timing for all these M1s are really close to each other within pretty much a second. You're gonna see right now that all the Mac Studio perform exactly the same at 36 seconds. And when we add in, for example, all the inner machines, they're performing at around 36 seconds as well. No, they did not take like a minute something to perform this task. So for some reason, the result got extrapolated incorrectly from my Excel spreadsheet down into Keynote. Now this has been corrected. You're gonna get a better idea how the system performs. So this is the way how the HDR merge spreads across all the other system right there. You're talking about 30 something seconds, 36, 37 seconds for all the M1s. Now, when you move into, for example, the regular M1 Mac Mini, MacBook Air is taking a little bit longer and also the Intel one is even taking longer. So if you want a fast task, definitely I would consider any of the M1 computers. Let's have a look at the result from Lightroom Classic Panorama Merge. This is the same one that I've used before. And here's the result for the Mac Studio. You can see that I would say there are some wild cards in this result. For instance, the M1 Ultra is performing third on a list. I would expect this to be second. And the M1 Max with 32 GPU version with 32 gigabytes of memory is coming in second for some reason. I can't explain to you exactly why this is happening. 
I would say this is an anomaly in a test, but after running multiple tests, the result is fairly consistent. So this is kind of what we got with these machines. I wouldn't say that they're most consistent result and they don't fall into the pattern that we would have normally expect them. Here is it when we compare to the rest of the M1 lineup, for example, the M1 Pro, M1 Max, and also the M1 Ultra. Like I said before, this 32 gigabyte is the wild card that pops up at the very top of the list. Everything else tends to perform the way how we would expect it with the amount of memory that is available on the system. 64, for the most part, tend to cluster at the top. 32 start to scale down depending on the speed of the machine itself. And then we have the M1 Pro with 16 gigabyte at the very bottom of the chart there. So with this one, once we add all the inner machines, for example, the Mac Pro, the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro, the M1 Mac Mini, you can see that it does take a longer time. So obviously these machines are definitely a step in the right direction and a huge improvement compared to the merge time on these other machines that are in the lineup. All right, let's have a look at Lightroom Cloud version now. So with Lightroom Cloud version, here's the result from Mac Studio lineup. You can see that the timing, it's pretty much almost in half, but it's not really quite 2.2 or 2.3 times like Lightroom Classic. And the reason why for this is because Lightroom Cloud version or Lightroom CC is utilizing the CPU and the RAM on the system really efficiently. So we're only seeing a double performance, which is something that we would expect considering that it doubles the CPU core in the system. Here what it looks like when we add the other machine into the lineup. So we can see right now that the M1 Max, Mac Studio for instance, just pretty much fall in line with the other machine. It's not performing that much better, it's not performing that much worse, it's only a few seconds behind and it falls just right in the middle. So this is telling me that the performance of that machine is as what we would expect it. But to me, that is not impressive by any means at all, especially when I already have the M1 Max inside my laptop. I just want something a little bit more powerful considering, like I said, power is already fed into the system and it has better cooling system. So the other thing that I also found out about the Mac Studio is that this is the chart taken from iStat menu running on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is the one that I have right now, M1 Max. You can see that the chart is all maxing out when it's running Lightroom. However, when I run this on both the Mac Studio M1 Max with 32 and also the 24 GPU version, we get the chart and the CPU that is not really fully maxed out. And it looks like that comb that's happening right there. So there's obviously something going on that's causing the machine to run that way. Now, this also gives me some hope because when we compare this, for instance, with the M1 Ultra, you can see that the Ultra is pretty much full and is loading the system fully, unlike, for example, the M1 Max. One more thing I want to mention about Lightroom Cloud version performance on the M1 Max. Some have commented that this could be the result from the SSD speed. I can tell you that is not the case. I have monitored the system really closely and also run an independent test where I'm using both files on an SSD externally and also exported to SSD externally on different SSD. The timing is pretty much identical between internal and external on multiple different machines. So what this is telling us is that this is something to do with the M1 Max and the performance on this machine in general. For the most part, exporting or also even importing file for that matter, the peak that the program would go in and use the SSD is maybe around 200 megabytes per second. So it's definitely not reaching anywhere the close peak performance for the SSD that are built into these M1 Max Mac Studio. But this gives me hope because this is telling us that the result for these may improve a little bit. For instance, when either the operating system or the software itself gets updated or both, we may see some time improvement for the Mac Studio yet. Now let's have a look at Capture One performance, starting with the import. During my testing, Capture One have launched a new version, 15.2, and they have claimed that on Apple M1 Silicon, the import preview time is supposed to be 100% improvement. So I'm interpreting that as double the performance, but we're really not quite seeing these graphs get cut in half just yet. Don't get me wrong, any performance improvement in Capture One is good. However, even after analyzing version 15.2 CPU usage, there's a lot of CPU that's not even being utilized in the system. So that tells me they can go in and crank that up a little bit more and definitely improve the import preview much more than they have done right now. Taking a look at the result of this, comparing with the other ones, and this is using version 15.1 because all the other tests are done with that version, we can see that there is kind of that 
gap again between the number of CPU cores on the system and you can see that the more CPU you have, the faster it is. However, going from the Max to the Ultra, for instance, we're supposed to see these bars at the very top get cut in half. We're not really seeing that at the moment. And adding a result from the other machines, obviously the M1s, they're definitely performing really well, the M1 Pros, the M1 Max, M1 Ultra, especially comparing with the Mac Pro that costs, for example, that much more compared to all these machine and lineup. It's definitely giving the Mac Pro the run for the money, but nonetheless, this is still telling us that the app is not fully optimized for Apple Silicon just yet. Now let's have a look at the export result. Now the export result between 15.1 and 15.2 are pretty much identical to each other, which is the reason why I'm just using the export result from 15.1 to include in this chart. For instance, between the two Ultra, we're only seeing about a 20 seconds improvement, and this is definitely more GPU cores. And the same thing with the Max going from 24 to 32, we're only seeing about a 30 seconds improvement or less than that. So obviously it's not really quite the big jump we're looking for. Now taking a look at this chart right here, this is a further analysis of a GPU core on these M1 system, starting with the 64 going down to 16 GPU. You can kind of see the spread going out there right now. I still think that for Capture One, if you're looking to find the best configuration possible, 24 core GPU tends to be the sweet spot. You're not paying too much money for that. And you're not really upgrading the 32 core GPU that you're not really going to use or utilize. The other thing to note about these is that they're all max and they all have 10 CPU. You can certainly get more performance out of it if you choose to go with the Ultra, but if you're not really going to use the extra 10 CPU in both of these Ultra, it doesn't make a lot of point or a lot of sense to really choose these top machine and paying $1,000 to $2,000 more to get that really slight bump in performance of less than like two minutes. And with this said, here's the result of this comparing with the inner machine. We can see that you can cluster this up by the M1s. That's the Ultra. This is the Max and this is the M1 Pro. Obviously, the number of GPU core on the ship is really dictating the way how these charts are really flowing right now. And all of these make sense. And if we take a look at this result comparing with, for instance, like the Mac Pro, obviously any of the M1 Pros, M1 Max and M1 Ultra is doing a really good job, particularly the Max and Ultra. You see there that is much shorter time, for instance, in the Mac Pro. The Radeon Pro Vega 2 is performing slightly faster than the W6900X. So that is a good thing, I guess. But nonetheless, you're talking about a GPU that costs the price of, for instance, a machine and the top of the list there. So those are things to think about. And let's now have a look at the Photoshop test result. For this, I am using Lloyd Chamber test. He has run the script. It works out really well and it keeps everything consistent. It reports the result for me, so I like that. I'm running all these three tests and I'll leave a link to his website and the script in the description below. If you wanna run that on your system, you can certainly do that. So here's the result for the speed test. This is just checking the CPU speed on the system in general. We can see that the timing for the Mac Studio are at the very top there. Between 70 and 90%, they're pretty much all the same, not anything like big surprise per se. Here's the timing compared to the other machines, the Intel and also the M1s. I would say feel free to process a chart on this so you can analyze the result yourself a little bit longer if you need to. And let's take a look at the Photoshop Medium 15.7 gigabytes. For some reason, the base M1 Max, this one is taking longer than the rest of the machine. I ran this test multiple times. It's still giving me the same results. So it's kind of very interesting that there's some anomaly there. However, when I bump this up to 90% RAM, everything is normal again. So there you have it. Here's the chart comparing it to the other Intel and also M1 in the lineup. And lastly, this is Photoshop Huge. So we can see how the Mac Studio is performing against all the other M1 Pro and M1 Max laptop variety. Again, this M1 Max 10 core CPU 24 GPU version, that base, is really taking a very long time to run the test. And as I mentioned before, there's something going on with the system that I uh, have, so I'm not really sure what's happening there, but otherwise the timing is pretty good. However, the 16 inch M1 Max with 10 core CPU, 32 GPU, and 64 gigabytes of memory still managed to beat out all the Mac Studio. So that just kind of goes to tell you how the performance of these machines are when it comes to tasks like this. Here is the chart comparing with all the lineup. So technically the 
Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra is not really quite beating out the 2009 Mac Pros as yet with 96 gigabytes of memory, but it's coming close enough that I would say, hey, you know what, this is good. Because if you take a look at this machine, one of them is a fourth of the price, the other one is a third of a price with a Mac Pro. So, I mean, nonetheless, they're all still really great performance. And with this said, we're not going to look at Final Cut Pro result on these M1 Ultras because the timing in my test, even with Final Cut upgrade and also compressed upgrade, the export time is still the same. So it's not really going in and tapping the extra encoder decoder engine on the M1 Ultra as I would have expected yet. So until that release comes, I'm not really gonna talk much about this and we're just gonna leave it where it is for now. So which Mac Studio for pros? There is no one size fit all. You have to ask yourself what you do frequently and the app that you use. If you're like me and you're constantly working on raw files, you use Lightroom Classic as your image editing app, then I highly recommend upgrading to the M1 Ultra because Lightroom can totally utilize that extra 10 CPU core in the system and it makes working through your files that much more fluid and it makes a lot of sense for me. For instance, I'm running on two 4K displays at the highest scaling resolution. Being able to scroll through Lightroom with all thousands of raw files really smoothly is an amazing experience. For instance, I can go and apply a batch adjustment to a group of images in the library module and the preview just come up extremely fast. This is something that haven't happened to me in Lightroom before. Most of the time there is lag or I have to wait or something like that. So I can tell you right now, these M1 Ultras are really amazing. If for instance, you're using Capture One as your primary program, then I will probably say going with the base configuration is going to do you just fine because Capture One doesn't really go in and utilize all these extra GPU in the system just yet. Until the app is updated to really utilize all those power that the system have, you're not really going to see that huge of a performance improvement. And I would even argue against going with the 32 GPU version because the performance that you're gonna gain from paying that $200 more is really minimal. And unless you're really going to utilize that or you have another app that you use that can utilize that, it doesn't make a lot of sense to really bump it up to that performance. Now, also, if you're using Capture One, I would definitely not recommend the M1 Ultra unless you're also using Lightroom Classic that can utilize the extra CPU on the computer. So those are some of my thoughts for that. With regards to video, at this point in time, I would still say go with the Max because we're seeing that the performance in the Ultra, even with the latest Apple update in Final Cut Pro 10.6.2, it hasn't really dipped into the double encoder decoder engine compared to the M1 Max just yet. So the performance overall, I still say that the base M1 Max is gonna be just fine, especially if you just do basic video editing, you're not doing a lot of um, animation work, you're not doing a lot of motion or after effect for that matter. When it comes to RAM on the system, the base configuration from Apple 32 and also 64 and Ultra tends to work really well. However, one of the things I always tell people to do is to launch Activity Monitor and just see how much RAM you're using, what your memory pressure is like. For instance, what you're seeing on the screen right now is a program called iStat, which I really like, iStat Menu. I'm going to leave a link to this program in the description below as well. It keeps track of your memory pressure throughout a period of time. For So for instance, what you're seeing right now is 96 gigabytes of memory on my Mac Pro for the past 30 days. This is the utilization that I have right now. And most of the time, it's not really peaking past like 25%, which sometimes it's going close to 50. Now with this, I'm gonna compare this to my M1 Ultra, which has only 64 gigabytes of memory. So going from 96 to 64 gigabytes, you can see that Majority of the times now I'm peaking at around 50% when I'm using a lot of this and the memory right now is using at around like 75% and a lot of times when your memory start to get into 75% the system start to compress those and start to do what they call a swap which is what you're seeing right now. But installing a program such as iStat Menu, it's going to give you so much insight into your computer usage so I would definitely highly considering doing something like that. With regard to SSD, well, there's a lot of people have reached out to me asking, can I just do 512 and run external SSD on the system or edit on external drive? You can certainly do that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Personally, for me though, I find that 512 gigabyte SSD, you fill that up really fast. And even if you try to keep your machine clean, you still need the apps. The apps still need temporary files access and everything like that. For me, just using the system, the SSD internal on the machine right now to just install all the apps, 
have my mail and all the other apps running. I'm using around 300 gigabytes so far. So I use a lot of data. If you're not the kind of person that uses a lot of data, you don't use, for example, Apple Mail app, you use the web version of it, then you're gonna be fine with 512. I still recommend at the end of the day to consider one terabyte SSD because for instance, if the program needs to write or swap to an SSD or Photoshop needs to cache to an SSD, you just have more capacity down the road that you don't run into a thing where it pops up saying that you're out of system memory and you're also out of space. You need to close the app or clean up your system. So it just helps you in the long run going at one terabyte and it doesn't cost that much more. And with that, this is pretty much going to be the last comparison between all the Mac Studios. I hope that you find this guide helpful in choosing the right Mac Studio for your system and also for your workflow. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, give this a like, subscribe and hit the bell if you're new, and remember, in art we trust.